Jackson will design our baluster placement and our rail structure. All right, so now that we have our elements, customized elements loaded into our project, as well as our basic form in place, now's a good time to get our railing system in place and then kind of go from there. And a little bit later, we'll finish out the stair. So right about now, we're about halfway point with our stair, but I want to get the railing and corner post in place first. Then we can extend this out, and it will make having our post placement and newel placement much more accurate and much more of an automated process. So I, I don't have to click and drag and try to place those elements. So to do that, I'm going to go to my architecture tab here at the top, and I'm going to click on my railings drop down, um, and I'm going to make sure I place on host. This will help us automate that process a little bit more. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to make sure that my positioning is where I want it. So we have two options. I can place it on my treads, or we could place our railing system on the stringer. So for my design, I want to have a nice, really open feel for these staircases or the stairs, and I don't want any elements resting on those, so I'm going to go with stringer. Now before we place our handrail system, we can go to the one that's already loaded, which is our default here, which is our railing handrail rectangular, and I'm going to edit this type. And what we can do is we can duplicate this one really quick, and we'll name this one. That way we can preserve our rectangular handrail in case we need to use it for another design down the line. Um, and by naming this one here, we can also use this one later on if you wanted to. So I can assign a name to this one. So we'll say curved railing. And I'll select OK. And now we can edit the two main things here, the rail structure as well as the baluster placement. So we'll start with the baluster placement. So when I open up this window, you'll notice three main sections within this uh, edit baluster placement window here. We've got the top area here. And what this one does, it allows us to set a main pattern. So we're able to tell Revit, hey, I want this particular baluster family with these kind of offsets. So I can set my base offset to either be the host. We'll leave it at that for our case here, which is the stringer, or you know, a top rail element if you wanted to. And we can also specify distance. And we can do those same uh, changes here for the top as well. So we have a top and a top offset. And we can also space these out with the offset button here and also a distance from the previous. But we're not really going to focus on this area too much. Uh, our main concern for our design and our process here is going to be using this middle section here. And then also we're going to specify how we want to lay out our posts or newels in this bottom area. So we'll start here in the middle. I'm going to click my check mark, check box here. And I want to make sure I have two balusters per tread. Um, if I wanted to, you know, I can jump that number up as much as I want to, but then it can get a little busy in your, in your design and things can start overlapping. But for me, I want a nice spacing for mine, and I'm going to stick with two. And in my drop down here, it's going to allow us to bring in anything that we've created or loaded into our project. So in our case, ours was curved baluster form. So I'm going to select that. So now what we just told Revit is I want a baluster spaced out per stairs two per stairs and this type of baluster. So finally, what we can do to really customize this a little more is we can specify where we want our posts. So I know I want start posts for sure. So I'm going to go to my drop down here and I'm going to locate the one we loaded earlier, which is our post newel. And I'm going to go with the larger size. So I can either go with four and a quarter or six and a quarter. We'll go with the six and a quarter. And we're going to have a start. We're going to have corners, which you'll see on our landing. And then we'll have this end post, which will be at the top, uh, right right where uh, level two begins here. So we'll select that one as well. So once I have all these elements in place, I can click OK. I can click OK here as well. I'm going to click stringers one more time. And again, we're selecting uh, an element to place this on. So now all I need to do, select my stairs, let Revit do most of the thinking, and it automatically brings in all the elements that we've designed and placed and it creates a really nice looking unique looking railing system so there's one thing we're lacking in our railing system um, again you really got to think about structure here um, and how things are connected and what's resting on what um, I want this to be as realistic as possible so those things are really important to me so on this bottom here I want to add another rail on the bottom that's going to allow our balusters to one to be connected all together to create a really rigid system but also gives me another surface to connect to my stringer so to do that we'll jump back 
click on my railing system, go back to edit type, and this time we're not going to mess with the baluster placement, but we are going to mess with our rail structure. So I'm going to click on edit, and now in this window, all I need to do is bring in and insert anything I want to add. So I'll click insert, and it'll add this first rail or row of rails for me. And I'm going to give this one a name here. I'm going to call this one bottom rail, so I know exactly what it is. And for my height, it's kind of a shot in the dark right now, but I'm going to go with four inches. I'm pretty confident we're going to need to make some small adjustments, but I think four inches is a good spot. I'm trying to, my goal is to get that bottom rail to rest directly on top of my stringer so that we can connect the balusters and the rest of the system to the stringer. Now, I really don't want any offsets or anything. Uh, for profile, I do want to set my profile, and I'm going to go for now, we'll go with a small square handrail type, and I definitely want to put my materials in place. I mean, after all, our goal is to be as realistic as possible. Um, so I want that bottom to be steel. So I'm going to scroll down until I find steel for my material. I'll click OK. I'll click Apply and OK. Apply and OK on this window. And we should see that rail system there on the bottom. And it's exactly what we have going on here. And you can tell, just as I mentioned, we'll probably have to make a little bit of adjustments to it. So I'm going to click on that rail system again here. We'll go back there. We'll go edit our rail structure. And I'm going to move this out of the way just a little bit. That way, as I'm making changes here to my dimension, I can click apply and still get a glimpse of what's going on in my model. So I'm not jumping around between different windows and causing extra confusion. So right now, we're set at four inches. So let's drop this down just a little bit lower. Um, let's see what three inches can do for us and see how close that gets us to our, our stringer there. So I'll do that, click apply. And it definitely got us a little bit closer, but I can definitely still see a gap there. So let's see what two inches does for us. I'll type in two inches, I'll click apply, and I'll click OK, apply and OK on this window, and we're pretty close to where we need to be. And if there's a tiny, tiny gap, that might not be a problem, but I definitely want to get this as close as I can. So TL, typing in TL will give me my thin lines, and it'll help me with my accuracy. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the placement of this bottom rail. So now what this did was it really created this railing system, it gave it a uh, additional structural strength, making it much more rigid, essentially one piece. So these uh, custom balusters are connected here at the top and bottom, and this entire system will be connected to our stairs through posts here, but also at a connection point here on the bottom rail to the stringers. So in the next lesson, we're going to take this one step further, and we're going to finish out this system, and I'll show you a couple of ways we can add some additional customized details to our balusters and our posts and new